Okay, so welcome back everyone. So this is uh, our third session about LaTeX. Uh, we've seen maybe the basics and uh, how to structure a file, uh, how to compile it. Then we've seen uh, about ma mathematics and uh, our last subject, main subject, is uh, about graphics and colors. Uh, because sometimes it's interesting to have some si something just not black and white. It's for readability, it's better. Um, but please, uh, 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 no fireworks and you know, when you know how to use colors, don't use it everywhere. It's bad. Okay, so just we've seen that uh, the first part was so big that uh, I need to move. Uh, tables and arrays on the second session and now I move a little bit of this first session here also this is about lists uh, we do, did not uh, have seen how to write lists uh, so we'll see now then a little bit of big documents and collaborative work and then I will explain how it is related and why um, this is uh, so this is important and uh, how you can manage it maybe better than with the any other um, software to produce documents. Then comes colors and graphics. We'll see how to import graphics, wi which you can add produce from an another tool, and how to draw graphics uh, within LaTeX and why uh, you may want to do that. And floats is a surprise, but it's very important. We'll see why later. Okay, so about lists. You are mainly um, three types of lists. You have um, itemization, um, enumeration, and description. Uh, this is, each is an environment, so you can use it, uh, now you, you know how to use an environment, but we'll see how to produce any um, item inside this environment. And you have uh, generic construction, uh, which can produce new type of list if you need, but we will not see today how to use it. This is somewhat difficult, so if you want to take a look, you can. This is well uh, documented and you will find everything uh, on the web about that. So, the syntax is very, uh, is common to all these environments. Uh, so you have the name of the environment, which can be itemized, enumerate, or description. Then each item starts with the item command. So um, for the item command, you, uh, you may have an optional argument. We will see later what is used for. Uh, it's, it depends uh, mainly on the, on the um, uh, environment you, you're using, if it's uh, itemize, uh, enumerate, or description. We'll see after. Uh, don't put any text uh, before the item. This is stupid. Uh, in fact, you're starting a list, uh, you don't put text in your list, but not in the first item, okay? So uh, it will not work, S okay? But you can put comments, for example, about colors, we'll see later, or if you want to change, um, for example, you, wa you want to put all the list in uh, boldface font, uh, you can put here the BF series command uh, just before the first item and everything will, will be bold in inside the environment, but not after. Okay, and uh, you can break any item in many paragraphs. This works perfectly, and the result depends on the type of list, but uh, it's just experiment and you'll see what you get. Okay, so you can use these uh, uh, environments in a nested way. Uh, this means uh, inside the first uh, point, you may have a, uh, another point, another list of points, and then here th there is only one item uh, per level, but this is okay just for demo. So you'll see that um, LaTeX take uh, care for you about the sign uh, which is used for uh, marking the itemization. So you have four, four level here, and don't use more than four, uh, or you will get this type of error uh, from LaTeX too deeply nested. You um, this is not met meant for using more than four nested environment, list environment. Um, when you nest lists, you can alternate. For example, you use uh, 
an enumeration. This is with, with numbers, one, two, three. And inside the, the, the first item, which has a one before it, you want to use um, an itemization. Uh, so you put first item, second item, but there is no uh, number here. Um, you can alternate this uh, as you want, but never more than four. It will not work. OK. Um, maybe you want to change the symbol used for uh, itemization. So you can change it uh, individually, locally. Uh, here, you, you just change a, a command which is internally used to produce the, the, the symbol. Uh, uh, search for that on the web if you want more information. And you can change it globally, okay? You can change it for any level of any of the fourth level. Just repa uh, replace the I at the end, which is um, a Roman one, in fact. So two I is two, three I is three, and for the last one is I V for uh, four. Okay, so you can see the effect. First, you just change for one item, then the two items inside the item ice, and then globally for all your documents. Maybe you will essentially use this one, uh, the other one, so um, not very common. Uh, then enumeration. Enumeration is when you want eventually to refer to a point, so you have to put numbers or letters to identify each one. Um, default is the following, one A with parentheses, uh, I and uh, big A. If in fact, where the little A is the little B for the second item and so on. Okay, here also you can change it, but you need to use the package enumerate, which is quite useful because you put a specification, uh, it's an option of the environment, you know, be between square brackets. Um, you can put mostly everything. Here are a bizarre example. I mean, uh, you can put just an A, it will work. Here I wanted to put a square bracket, so I have to protect it. Uh, you see why? Because if, if I don't, uh, in fact, the, the first uh, closing square bracket here, this one, um, will be seen by LaTeX as the closing uh, of the, the, this opening one. So this is bad because this is not what we want, so we protect it. This is just a trick. But you can also put comments inside. And uh, what the package will do, it's, it, it will uh, find the little a, the one, maybe big A or uh, Roman, if you put a little i. Uh, it will find it in the string you put, and it will replace it with, uh, for example, you put a, um, an i, two i, three i, i, v, 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 i, v, i, i, and so on. Okay? Uh, so you can put also a comment uh, inside it to, to produce, for example, yeah, the paragraph uh, um, symbol. Uh, the last one, uh, not least useful, uh, the description, which is mostly used for definitions. Uh, this is, in fact, it just suppress the indentation of the paragraph at the beginning. Okay, so everything is aligned on the left margin. Um, it put the first, the, the word you pass as an option of the item in uh, boldface. This is the word, for example, you want to define. Um, and then uh, the text is written, but there is an offset to uh, keep things under the, this uh, label, uh, label here. Okay, and this, this will continue on, uh, um, on upcoming lines. Okay, then, why big documents? Uh, maybe you have question about lists? No, it's okay, quite clear. Okay, about big documents and collaborative work. Why is it related? Because when you work alone with a big document, this is like if you were um, three or four, maybe five, because you, you can't remember everything you've done in each place, and sometimes you get lost with yourself. 
because you don't know what you've done before. Okay, so this is pretty the same ideas. Uh, this is the same way you will organize your work because this is the same problem you will encounter. Okay. This is some tips. I will go deeper in some of them. This is quite big slide, but this is meant for further reading. So go back on, on, on it and uh, study why it's interesting. Maybe some important po point. Uh, the suitable document class. I mean, use a class that has sufficient uh, section comments, for example, and you will see later that you have all, um, also comments for um, appendices, uh, for producing index, and things like that. So use this uh, type of uh, document class, or if not this one, some derived from this one, okay? Uh, we'll see that you can um, divide your code into multiple source files, as you do with most of the languages, because this is better to find information when you have a tree, with this, which is the, the, um, your um, uh, di directories and uh, what is on your um, uh, uh, hard, hard drive. Hard drive. Oh, hard drive disk. Um, okay. So as for any language, use command. Comment. For compilation, maybe a make file or batch file if you're uh, under Windows, but you, you will find a lot of information about it uh, on the web. This is useful because uh, old processes like uh, running LaTeX, then BibTeX, then LaTeX twice, or things like that can be uh, all automated, so you will not have to uh, bother about uh, why it don't work or, oh shit, I forgot to do this or the, okay. Um, Use maybe a versioning system, if you know SVN, uh, JIT, uh, which are software that keep track of all history uh, you've made on documents. Uh, when, you're, uh, when there are many people, this is used also to solve conflict, because many people use the, um, I mean, modify the same files, and they, they have to, um, to merge the differences between them if any. Um, but when you're alone, it's pretty useful for the history. Uh, if sometimes you may make uh, a big mistake and you have to uh, uh, get back um, things you have lost uh, in the process, uh, parts of your document you have completely lost. So if you work on it for three or four months, this is very important to keep track uh, of your work. Um, the minimal file, this is just a trick, but a little file, we will see how to write it, just to test some parts of your document before inclusion. Because when you will have um, maybe 50, 100, 150 pages, uh, compi compiling these old things may take some time, so you might want to run just a little part, just to test and know what's wrong with your code. Uh, uh, why it doesn't produce exactly what you want, for example, for equations, big equations you want to align perfectly at the end of your work, just test the equation, not the overall. Okay? This is related to uh, dividing your code in multiple source files because you can include, uh, this is like a library, you know, your, uh, your um, equation is in a file like a library, you can test it, run it with a minimal file, and then include it in a big project, which is your old thesis or something like that. Uh, then it's for readability, maybe a good font. This is all available as uh, packages, so you will find uh, most of them on the web. Uh, Linux Libertin is quite a good one, which is, uh, yes, good quality, good ligatures, uh, uh, very good for uh, writing. Uh, we'll see how to adjust margins, uh, font size we've seen before, uh, to get around 60 characters per line, no more than 80, never. Is, is, this is impossible to read uh, multiple lines. I mean, hundreds of lines that are more than 80 characters uh, long. Uh, why? Because you get lost every time you have to uh, read back, you know, uh, go back on the left to read. You, you lost the line and you, you, this is awful. So avoid more than 80 characters and the best around 60. And how to, you, you need to print a table of contents, maybe an index. Uh, and the bibliography, this is very important. 
um, because so in a big documents when you want to go back uh, and find uh, uh, very precise information uh, for your reader, this is important to have all these tools. Um, you don't write for you, you write for people. Okay. Okay. Uh, and for references, uh, the we'll see the mechanism with uh, uh, ref and uh, uh, with a label and a ref uh, to and page ref to site. This is uh, usable with anything that mostly anything that use uh, counter uh, equations. Uh, uh, um, uh, sorry, uh, enumerations. Uh, we'll see figures later. Uh, so you can refer to things that are uh, far away in your document. And if you use uh, the extension hyperref, uh, you can um, um, make your PDF uh, with hyperlinks. This is your reader. You just click and jump uh, where the, the information is, which is quite useful. Then, how to um, break your, uh, file, uh, your big source files into multiple source files? You have two comments uh, that are quite uh, different. The first one is input. It's just uh, where it's included. It reads the file and put, put it as, uh, as is inside your documents. This is like uh, uh, some include in, uh, in, uh, in uh, C, but uh, this is OK. Maybe I should not say that because of the second comment. OK, this is good for big equations you want to test uh, a, a part or big tables, you don't want to mess your old code, you just want to include uh, big tables you have produced uh, in uh, another file. Or um, sometimes graphics, but we'll see that this is not the best way to do it, but we can. Um, include is quite different, it inserts a page break, so it's more for big parts of your documents, uh, either parts or chapters, you know, the higher level of uh, uh, sectioning comments uh, because it starts a, a new page. So you have to be careful about that. So now uh, we'll have multiple files, so maybe we will need to structure the working di directory to uh, find uh, files and to know how to compile everything um, in a good way. Okay, so for example, I write a document uh, named uh, Cancelling Flowers. So uh, this is how I name uh, the, the old directory. Inside I have the main file, which is flowers.tech. Um, then the preamble. You know all these things I've called the preamble, use package, eventually new command, uh, everything you want to renew uh, for the old documents, you put it in the preamble. Uh, now you put it in this file and you use input to load it. So you have all this extension defined somewhere. You don't need to, when you proofread your documents, you don't care about the preamble. This is not what you proofread, okay? So you just read your documents straight away. Uh, min.tech, this is how I call my minimal document to test things and I will say, we will sh see um, after how it's structured. Then um, you can use di directories for big parts. And then inside it, the sections or chapters, uh, depending on the way you've structured your work. Uh, for example, on the uh, Roses is my first um, chapter, and I talk about horticulture uh, generally, and white and red roses. So how I name the file is not very important, but uh, OK. And you can have a global equations and images. Maybe if you have uh, a lot of equations and images, you want, to put, uh, you want to put them in separate files, and you want to attach them inside each big chapter. So you will have equations and images inside about roses, but the same inside about mag magnolia, okay? This is how uh, your flowers.tech should look like, because you will not have a lot of things inside it, just the document class. This is needed, you, you can't avoid it, okay? Then the preamble, you input it. So you, te you tell tech, okay, I'll, you read this file. You already compute what is, what's in, uh, in it. 
Uh, then we have this include only. You may guess what it means. We will see later. Um, then title offer all this type of information to produce the, the title. Then you have this front matter common inside the begin document. You have front matter, main matter, and back matter. Uh, these three comments change the way things are looking when you're uh, when you're producing your documents. For example, uh, front matter is often, I think this is the case in uh, the book class, uh, is often uh, with page numbering in uh, Roman. There's little one, little, uh, little, little i, little i, i, and three i, okay, i, v, and so, uh, and so on. Um, so you change it for, the fir for this part because you want things to have different numbers. Then when you start with main, mat main matter, you will have um, uh, normal page numbering. You can change all this, but this is how it's structured by default. Okay? So you have no normal numbering. Um, starting with 1, it does not start with, uh, I don't know, maybe 15 if you have a lot of things in the front matter, it starts at one. Um, then appendix is important because uh, after appendix, some uh, chapter or sectioning comments uh, in general, you can look uh, exactly which uh, by uh, maybe testing it or looking uh, on the web. But uh, some of the sectioning comments will be changed so that uh, you will produce ap uh, appendix a and not appendix one, for example. Uh, this because often we use uh, this uh, these comments differently. Okay, and then back matters. It's all this material that is used for the this useful for the reader to refer uh, in the document so if back in your document. Okay. If you don't understand some of the comments, uh, for example, at the end, print index or list of figures, this is because I don't want to go further in the, into this, but I want you eventually to take a look. If you write a big document, just take a look what these documents may produce. Print index is very important if you are more than 100 pages. OK, the minimal file. This is just exactly the same preamble. And you use input to test the file you want to work on. So you just have to test a little part of your work. You compile it. You test it. This, this will run very fast. You can use uh, also, I, I didn't talk about that, but when you write first your document, use the draft option. This, we will see that this avoid inclusion of uh, images, and they will put this will put these little black boxes in the margin when you have uh, alignment problems because of uh, over full lined or things like that, okay? So use it, this is important, but uh, don't forget to remove it or to replace it by final when you produce your final document. Okay, so here the um, minimal file use final because we may, we may want to test some graphics uh, extensions or things like that, so we don't want to be screwed by this uh, uh, draft option. We want to be sure that everything is included. And then input uh, on the file you want to use. Uh, I told you about changing margins. If you have too many characters per line and this is difficult to read, you can use the uh, geometry extension, which is very, very easy to use. Uh, in fact, uh, in the options of the inclusion, uh, you have uh, it's a key. Um, equal value uh, system, so you just put a uh, top equal, so this will set the top margins, for example, top equal four centimeters, if you want, okay? So this is very uh, easy to use. Um, just take a look uh, at the documentation. This is a few pages, I don't know, maybe four or five pages, then the rest is the code, so about five written pages. This is somewhat short. And you can change the geometry inside the documents, but don't do it. Um, uh, eventually, you can use the layouts uh, package to um, test, to show uh, how your document will be uh, structured with this margin, uh, where will be uh, footnotes, where will be headers, 
this will uh, produce a little graphics of uh, uh, where are limits of your pages, where are margins or things like that. So uh, you use uh, use package layouts in the preamble and then just current pa page, uh, page design. Uh, you can test it uh, in a, uh, a document in a temporary directory when you choose what you want to use. Okay, you move uh, every options back to your preamble file and you forget about uh, uh, this command. Okay, so now we'll start the effective graphic part of this uh, session. First, with colors. Okay, why there is a problem with colors? Um, first, it uh, was not anticipated by Donald Kenneth. Um, this is quite normal because at uh, his time, uh, he wanted to produce uh, documents uh, uh, inside. Uh, it, at first, it was for, for example, articles or things like that, and uh, he didn't need um, color. Um, printing color was very expensive. Um, no personal printer, uh, I mean professional printer, uh, um, can print uh, with colors uh, at this uh, at this time. Uh, this will all uh, laser or things like that, but or matricial or things, <laughs> not um, inkjet uh, uh, printers. So no need for color. And so the DVI file format does not allow uh, colors. But the DVI files in is not meant for use directly. Uh, this um, docu this file format is meant for um, transmitting to a driver of a printer that would produce then the printed documents. So, uh, tech includes the special command that, that can uh, that enable um, the, the ability to talk directly to the driver. So you can send informations to the driver, including colors. Okay? Now, we don't choose directly DVI to printer. Okay, we use eventual DVI to PS or even we compile directly tech to PDF, which there is a little part of DVI inside, but okay. The final uh, printer driver is often either PostScript or PDF, okay? So color uh, um, will, be, uh, will depend on the, these two drivers and graphics also. For color, we have two extensions. Uh, the first one is uh, totally driver dependent. Uh, this means that uh, you have a set of colors uh, you can use. Uh, these colors are, um, often you want to use colors by name. You don't want to refer by uh, exacode for HTML exacode or um, um, RDB, uh, 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 you know, uh, no, uh, yes, uh, RGB uh, sequence uh, to name colors. So you want name of colors. Uh, this is uh, the problem of color that you can use name, but you may have conflicts uh, inside. So sometimes it doesn't work, and it, this is all related to the driver. Uh, there is uh, only eight uh, predefined colors really predefined, uh, I mean colors you're sure you will find on your system when you start a, a LaTeX document. And uh, yeah, there are two incompatible different ways to produce this name color store. This is not the extension we will use, I think. And um, extended color, X color, is the one that you should use. Uh, you have uh, many ways to uh, uh, create colors, but all are um, compatible and you can jump from one to the other and the result will be good with mostly uh, any uh, driver. So at the end you obtain the color you wanted, uh, no, no other color or things like that. Okay, so how to use it? You include the package, then, uh, so the boldface uh, um, uh, switch is just uh, for you to be sure that you'll see the, the color uh, on the screen. So this is not necessary. Uh, first comment, text color. Mind, remind you something. Text RM, text DF, text IT, 
okay? This is exactly the same format yet you, um, of this uh, uh, formatting command here with color. So you have text color, the color, and then the argument is the text you want to modify. Okay, so we, are, we had text BF and well, we had also BF series to change the color. There is the same constru construction with colors. You can put the color command and its effect uh, is for all the group you're in. So here, I have a first co curly braces before the color command, one after this, and only this is uh, modified by the command, just like uh, IT shape and uh, uh, BF series or thing like that, SC shape. Okay, so back, s back to this one. Well, um, I told you that you, can, you have many ways to produce colors, and one is just to uh, blend them, okay, to mix them. First, let's just add this, um, um, what do you call this punctuation? The, hmm? Exclamation? Yes, it's like, okay. Okay, so red uh, exclamation and then 50, okay? This is 50, like 50%. 50 so this, mean, uh, this means we will use only 50% of the, of the red. So the rest is white. Uh, this is very useful, uh, for example, when um, you're in a society when, where uh, some special ink has been uh, uh, bought and uh, they can only use uh, a, a very special type of uh, blue uh, indigo, uh, okay? But uh, they can't use any other color. They can just scale intensity of the color. So here you can do it very easily. But you can do f things better. For example, you can replace the color that is uh, uh, blending with. Uh, before, it uh, default is white, but you can put blue. So here this is 50% of red, 50% and blue. But all this, red exclamation 50 uh, exclamation blue is a color so you can blend it okay this is not useful here but uh, this is a very interesting construction and the result here is that a 50 50 colored is diluted uh, uh, two to eight uh, I mean two of this color to eight of white okay so um the result is uh, in our uh, GB uh, space uh, color uh, color space. You have uh, these values between zero and one. Okay, you have many. So here, this is um, in the optional argument. This is the same for just the color command. Is used to change the way you specify colors. So default is named using eventually blending, and uh, the the. The other one is this one. But you will see yet that you don't use it uh, um, so much often. So you can specify the target model. Uh, this is how color colors will be expressed in your final document. If you use PDF, you have no choice. In fact, whatever you put in the use package, you will get uh, uh, RGB at the end. But um, for a uh, postscript, you can uh, specify what you want at the end. This is useful if you, s if you send your manuscript, for example, to a professional printer um, that will uh, um, 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 bind your work in a book. Um, and he may want to use the uh, uh, CMYK case for black, you know, uh, cyan, magenta, yellow and K for black. Uh, this is uh, um, very useful for this type of use, okay? Uh, for others, uh, HSB or RGB, but uh, in fact, with PDF, there is no difference, so forget about that. But if you want to send it to a professional print printing service, you might want to use it. We, uh, we talked about always separate uh, the, f the semantic and the presentation. This is also the case. So you have ways to define uh, new colors. Uh, the first one, color let, is used for is the named version of uh, defining a new comment. So here I defined a color for section. 
this is better if I want to change all sections than using di directly the red 50 blue uh, specification inside each section, okay? So you can define your own color for everything you want to do. This is the good way to do it. Um, and then you, you use this section color as a color as well as uh, red, blue, yellow, uh, everything uh, you might want to, to use. You have also defined color uh, that can where you can specify um, the, the color space you use and you can specify uh, many color spaces. This is uh, if you have some corrections to put, for example, we might want to um, um, lower the brightness uh, in inside the HSP, but uh, to keep it uh, in the same way, uh, in the classic way, in RGB or things like that. This is for people that cares about perfect color. Okay, if you want to know more about colors, you have a table option of the Xcolor package, we can which is uh, equivalent to including the color table package. Uh, this will allow to put uh, colors uh, on rows, uh, columns, uh, cells of a uh, table. So maybe it, it can be useful. Uh, colors can be gray. This is important because uh, you may need to uh, have some columns which, uh, which have a, a light gray in the, back in the background you will need to use this, you can't uh, uh, do it another way, I think. Maybe yes, but not easily. Uh, you can change the whole background of a page with page, col page color. Blend colors is used for, uh, uh, from a starting point, you add, for example, you add 50% per of red to all colors that are coming in the page. That can be to change uh, uh, all colors or to, to lighter uh, bit uh, colors in, a, in pages. Um, okay, then test color produce tables to if you want to test many colors, uh, compare it to each, each other to choose the best one. If this is at the end uh, of your documents, you know you've produced most uh, of pages and you're, you're not sure colors uh, are good with each other, so you, pr you print a uh, test color and you, you see wh where is the problem. And you look at the documentation, there are plenty of useful uh, information in it. Okay, so I'm, well, yes, uh, we can make a break now and we'll start again with these graphics. So you have 50, 50, min uh, 50 minutes to uh, taking pictures and we want to include these images inside uh, our document because you can't do uh, any uh, picture just with a um, software. Sometimes you just uh, take a picture and you want to include it. So we need this tool. So you have essentially two ways. This is the same problem as for color. You have graphics. This is the historical package and graphic extended, uh, which is the new one. Um, Essentially, they are uh, uh, compatible, so every comment from graphics works in graphics. I don't know if you hear the difference, but okay. <laughs> Graph X, <laughs> if you want. Um, and the difference is only in optional arguments, which is quite good. Uh, in fact, graphics, the second one, uh, use keys, uh, keys equal values. We've seen this before. This is a very good model for uh, modifying the behavior of uh, comments and this is um, most modern packages use it because this is perfect for that okay so the syntax is the include graphics forget about the options for now um, and then the name of your file with extension okay the result is uh, an, Im an image with which is included in your document uh, as a character. Okay, so it lays on the on the line on the baseline of your uh, document, and uh, uh, the the text uh, flows uh, around. If you had so many lines, it increases also the spaces the space between lines. So this is not how we want to use images. In fact, so we'll see later how to avoid this behavior. Okay. 
Uh, about option, you can change the width of your image. Uh, you can use a scaling factor, you can rotate it, you can mirror it. So this is all in the document in documentation of the package. And if you have seen before, this is quite easy to search the uh, compressive take archive network to find a package. You just put uh, its name and you get the documentation uh, together with um, eventually uh, STY files or tech files, okay? So you can change uh, a lot of things. This is very easy to use. Uh, every key is separated from the previous with a comma and so on. You can add spaces, you can break lines in between if, you're, if you need. Uh, okay. But uh, for the formats of images, you can include uh, in your final document. The problem is, I told you, graphics uh, is not um, taken into account di directly by the compiler. In fact, this is the job of the R um, driver uh, or the renderer. So you have some restrictions. For example, if you use LaTeX, then DVI-PS, you can only include uh, en encapsulated PostScript, which is uh, a flavor of uh, PostScript, but uh, for images. So um, you you need to produce these uh, documents. You can convert. Uh, mostly everything uh, into uh, EPS. Uh, when you have uh, bitmap images, uh, which can be raw or compressed, uh, like J uh, JPEG, uh, you y you lost something. I th this is not very. The result is not uh, very good. So uh, for that, PDF is better because you can include either um, JPEG, uh, portable network graphic called the um, PNG, which is good for um, this, um, for example, graphics you, you, you've produced with a software that can't export to a vector format. I don't know if you know, but you have two types of formats for um, graphics. You have um, bitmap formats, which well, every point is described with uh, its color or information like that. Uh, this is meant for uh, pictures you, uh, you take or for um, things like that, for for paintings uh, eventually. Um, but on the other hand, you have uh, vector formats, which are mostly meant for uh, um, graphics you uh, produce with a computer. Uh, you can then, um, inside the, the, the this type of format, you store uh, lines, uh, you store shapes, and then you can scale everything, because everything is just described, not painted uh, by point by point. In fact, when you scale a bitmap file, you get big pixel, and this is not uh, what you want to, to produce. OK, uh, PNG is maybe a little in between. This is a bitmap format, but uh, it can store um, a big um, area of the same color as a descriptive element. So this is good when you don't want for example, that the compression algorithm of JPEG uh, um, get the 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 the, the lines, the, the black lines you have uh, um, mixed with the the red colors that is just uh, uh, close to uh, in your uh, uh, I'm drawing or things like that. Okay, so uh, each time you have big areas of the same color, which is often the case when you produce uh, an image with a a software, you can convert it uh, in a quite good format with PNG, okay? And PDF, which is uh, uh, also uh, um, a format for images, even if you don't know, this can store the size of the images, and then uh, this is a vector uh, format, so you can convert uh, without loss uh, any uh, vector format uh, uh, file into PDF, okay? So maybe I can advise you to use PDF LaTeX if you want to include images. This is this will be uh, maybe easier. Um, okay, so uh, we've seen that PDF uh, can be a, um, a file format, but sometimes we want to use uh, equations in a graphic, and we don't have tools that can produce 
uh, LaTeX equations using exactly the same font we've used in our documents uh, or even not just uh, equations but text if you want for example label uh, things inside your uh, uh, graphic you want the same fonts that you use in your old documents because this is better this is uh, the how you will see the quality of your document okay so how can we do that you can use Inkscape which is um, um, vector file format editor uh, which is quite good for that because it can export in a PDF plus LaTeX format uh, which allows uh, the use of um, LaTeX commands okay so uh, on the Inkscape pages you can find any information about that uh, this is a, a good idea uh, if you don't if you just have many um, I think if you just have one graphic or two in your old pages you don't want to bother with a uh, um, uh, internal solution to LaTeX but you want to get exactly the same fonts uh, the same equations of your documents uh, so then you can use this this is quite goos, good and you can use uh, any command uh, inside the images for example you can use a reference directly inside it you can use a label inside the image so you can refer back to this inside the, uh, the image which is quite good solution okay you can also use if you want to plot uh, a function or a set of data you can use a uh, genu plot which is uh, very very good but uh, some people don't like it because you have to write um, a command file which is then uh, read by uh, genu plot the software uh, that produce then the, the the tech you need to include but the result is perfect you can't uh, get uh, something better i think for plotting data but we'll see that if you have um, not so big set of data you can do other in you know, other ways okay so you can also produce directly your graphic into LaTeX okay Use, using tools packages included in LaTeX that's what we will see historically you have the picture environment uh, it's uh, in the in the LaTeX distributions in the LaTeX kernel from the beginning uh, of uh, LaTeX but this is quite limited you if you just have some little things to produce this may interest you so you can produce for example um, circles uh, which is a novel with with same dimensions uh, horizontally and vertically and you put things at some uh, coordinates and you you give uh, at the beginning you know in parentheses you give uh, the size of your picture so you have to uh, compute by yourself the size of the final picture you want to obtain okay this is not very very useful and this is quite limited but this is the history for the red box this is uh, I, I, um, I drew it outside the picture environment to uh, show you where are the limits of the picture okay but this is not in the code here okay uh, and you have put for putting things and multi put if you want to put multiple things so if you want to do things repeatedly this may be good okay the problem is picture picture can run with LaTeX PDF LaTeX everything but we've seen that graphics depend on the driver so how it is possible in fact picture use special fonts that are distributed with LaTeX and loaded to produce graphics the problem is you have a limited set of uh, for example slope for uh, uh, when you draw a line uh, you have a limited uh, set of uh, circles so you can't put uh, uh, very very big uh, circle you have limits um, for example here slopes uh, can be only um, you have 25 slopes so 
because uh, you use, um, you know, this x and y uh, um, uh, directed vector, uh, where um, uh, this, these coordinates of the, uh, of the vector, of the leading vector, are, uh, uh, have to be uh, integer, and between minus 4 and 4, so this somewhat uh, gives you only 25 slopes or some, something like that. So you can see the result is not good because uh, things are not uh, um, linked properly and this is step by step, but this is not perfect. Uh, if you use Pestrix, you can draw a line like that. Ah, this is far better, in fact. You choose, uh, you specify the size as before, and then you draw a line point by point. You have many, many other commons. But why uh, I will not talk about uh, this? Uh, the idea is PS tricks use PostScript capabilities. The problem is uh, if you want to use PDF LaTeX, which is quite useful for um, including uh, images, uh, JPEG, PNG, uh, P other PDF, but you can uh, include the uh, EPS in fact. Um, or for producing uh, ip uh, hyperlinks between pages in your documents, you know, using this hyperref uh, package, uh, you can't have both, okay? You can't have PS tricks and uh, this uh, capability. So there is a problem. The solution might be PDF, the portable graphics format, invented by uh, Til Tanto, it's quite recent, I think, during uh, the 90s, you know, something like that, maybe later. And Tix, which is based upon PGF, but which is uh, a high-level uh, language, so you speak like a human to your computer, and it does what you want. Okay, these are some advantages, uh, all... Um, there is not uh, everything, but uh, you can see some uh, important uh, things. Um, for uh, The system is based on keys. We talked about that maybe three times today, and you will uh, hear about it if you continue to use uh, LaTeX. Keys are very useful to specify how things work. Here, better, you can define your own keys uh, to be, for example, uh, to contain information about how to produce the, your, your image. We'll see later how to we can use uh, that. You have various coordinate system. You can uh, use uh, you know, polar uh, coordinates, uh, Cartesian coordinates, but uh, also 3D coordinates uh, with many possibilities. And you can invent your own uh, specification, your own coordinate system if you have one which is uh, better than uh, those uh, included uh, in uh, ticks, you can put it and use it. Okay, uh, some softwares uh, can export to ticks with extension, which is uh, sometimes good if you want to, uh, uh, you know, you have produced something with uh, Inkscape uh, or for Blender for 3D, and you want to modify it just a little, but uh, not everything and you don't want to produce uh, things from the beginning so you let them produce ticks and this the the result is quite uh, readable so you can modify things and you understand what they're doing because they call a sphere a sphere they call a circle a circle and you can refer to things just by a name which is very very useful uh, you can name uh, points shapes well, things you couldn't do with uh, with a uh, PostScript, uh, I mean PS tricks, which is uh, very useful. And you can also refer, because of the name, you can refer to points outside of the picture you're cur currently drawing. For example, this uh, a row from there to there uh, is produced not by trying to place uh, a picture just uh, uh, under the two words, which, which can take me uh, hours, but in fact, uh, there is a node uh, the content of this node is the word there. The same for the second node there. Each have a name, which are here n1 and n2, 
uh, you can go through the code uh, for those who want. Uh, I can give you that if you're interested. Uh, and then I just draw an arrow from this node, this first node N1, to this second node N2. Okay, and I get what I want. For the crossed word, this is the same. Uh, in fact, uh, word is uh, inside a node which is crossed. Okay, we'll see uh, how to do it. And the most important, the very biggest argument of that, there is a very complete, uh, a very interesting documentation. Uh, this uh, you can read it, uh, you know, in your bed before sleeping. This is very well done. You have a tutorial at the beginning before documentation. You have a tutorial of a few pages, and you can run through it. This is a very good, very good documentation. Okay, so we'll see some bases. Here is uh, some code. Uh, so you you start in the environment like before. This is not a picture environment, not a PS picture, but a TIX picture, because we'll use uh, TIX here. Um, the, um, the simplest command you can use is the path command, which starts a path. Every drawing command in TIX ends with a um, semicolon, so uh, you get this. Okay, where is the picture? There is nothing on the screen. In fact, I will draw a box around the picture and you will see that it takes some place. Um, for information, the basic unit of tech, you, ca you can't see it in a big screen like that, but the basic unit is ze uh, zero 01. S uh, is, uh, the basic unit is one centimeter, sorry. So what we have there, we have a zero, zero. So let's say it's here. This may be okay, a good idea in uh, our picture. Maybe it's here. Then there is these two dash, we don't know, but we might go a line to uh, one, zero, zero. So one, zero, this may be here. Then to zero, one, and then to one, one. Okay, but why is there no ink? We see that the picture exists because I can put a box uh, around it, but I don't see the picture. Okay. In fact, uh, you have to specify to draw. This is not the default because sometimes you just want to place things. We'll see later uh, how. So here, I specify to draw, and we get exactly what uh, we uh, uh, um, we think. Um, when you have two dash, this is a real line. When you have nothing, th this is just a move to inside your path. So you jump uh, to uh, the next point. And we get uh, exactly 0, 0 to 1, 0, then zero, 0, 1 to 1, 1. OK. In fact, uh, uh, instead of using path and the option draw, you can specify directly draw. This is just a shortcut, but think that the, the only common, mostly, of ticks is path, okay? So, this is good. Now, let's put a node. Path, then move to coordinate 2, 2. Then put a node containing an A. So, here is 0, 1, 1. Two two put a node containing an A. Okay, perfect. This is you just read it like it were text. Okay. Uh, you have also here a shortcut. Uh, so you can see here what is uh, it's useful to have a path with no draw by default with no ink. Because here we don't want a dot uh, on the two two coordinates. We just want to move to there in order to place a node. Okay. Um, you can give the node a name by specifying it just after the node uh, 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 word. Uh, in, fact you are, in fact, you have also uh, here a shortcut because a drawing uh, or putting a node is very frequent. So you say 
the node A is placed at 2, 2 and contains A. Okay? We just read uh, through it. This is okay how it's done. And you see each comment is ended by a semicolon. Okay? Um, you can see. Here you can't see, but if uh, I put an A, the A is exactly the, the A of the current font. So there is no modification about that. Uh, the node can take an option. Beware that this is the node that takes an option. If you remember, this is a path with a node. Here, if I wanted to put uh, the option, I put it after node, not after path. Because this is not the path I want to draw, this is the node. Okay. So here we want to draw. Uh, so we have a boxes, uh, a box uh, uh, around the, the content of the node. So this is a node which is drawn, called A at 2.2, .2 containing an A, a big A. Okay. Okay. More complicated. Why names? Because we can use name to join things afterwards. For example, I draw the node A uh, on the second line. On the third line, I start a path uh, which starts from coordinate uh, 2, 1, which is here. OK, at 2, 1, I do not put a node because I don't want content. So I put coordinate. This is the same as an empty node. OK. So I just put something here, which is some coordinates. I, uh, I give the name B. Then I move to 3, 0 0.5, and I get C. OK? Then I can draw from A to B to C. And you'll see that this, th the system is quite uh, uh, clever, because when you draw from A to B to C, you don't want to draw inside the node. Okay? You just want to uh, start the line after going out of the, the, the A. So now maybe I want to draw a polygon, you know, closing this uh, path, for example, to fill it uh, with uh, any color or things like that. So. Maybe we want just add, uh, for uh, in the for the last line we ju we would just want to add a uh, line to A. Why we don't get uh, what we wanted? Because the reference point of this node is uh, at two two, which is here. So when you want to go to uh, go from A to B to C back to A, you go there and the line is uh, uh, ended before, uh, as we, we've seen, this is what we want to do. But here, we wanted a polygon, which is not what we get. So you can use the cycle command, which is uh, used to close a path, any path, uh, any draw, any thing that starts with path can be closed with cycle. Then a, pa a closed path uh, can be used uh, to be filled. Uh, with colors, with shadings, so you will see all of this uh, in the documentation. I can, I can't go through anything of text. This is uh, too big, but you will see that just with some basis, you can do some very pretty things and uh, very good things. Then, if you want to refer to the documentation, th this is the good idea. Okay, you can also change because maybe. I wanted not to go uh, di directly, it was, okay, sorry. We were here, maybe it's too direct, I just, I, I want, you know, to go from there to there to there. So, I have two choices, in fact. Uh, either I can specify directly to go up then left, uh, either I need to find uh, the node, uh, the coordinates of the node which is there. Okay, the first one is m maybe what you want to do. In a higher uh, in a high level uh, uh, drawing uh, tool, this is what you want to do. So this is what we do: go up, then, in fact, go vertically, then horizontally. Do what you want to get uh, two points connected between C and A. 
but first get vertically, then horizontally. And you get exactly what you wanted. Some example uh, of this uh, different path operation. So a path operation is this kind of symbols. So um, dash dash or uh, you know bar dash uh, to specify how to move. For example, here we we draw a point. You have the first option you've seen. I've changed the line width. I've changed the 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 pen I use to 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 draw. Okay, so you change the pen. Then you start to draw at 0, 0. Uh, you, tr you put a line from 0, 0 to 8, 0. Uh, then you go uh, vertically, then horizontally to 7 and uh, 0.3, which is here. So you have to go there and there. Okay? You can draw any line you want uh, like that. Okay? Now, maybe we want a curve, okay? So, you have another path operations, which is called controls. This might be seen as something difficult. In, f in fact, you just put two dots to start the path operation. You tell, okay, we'll put two controls, 0, 2.5, and then uh, 4 and uh, 0 0.5. OK? Show this, this, all these two points. And how the line is drawn between 0, 1 and 8, 1 here, this is just by going first in this direction, then trying to get the same direction here. In fact, this is... Uh, cubic uh, Bezier curve, so this is a mathematic object, but this is computed directly into LaTeX. So here you can see the power of LaTeX. And just um, under the, this first sequence with, with the controls, uh, I've seen uh, how would be the line if uh, it goes directly to the first control point, to the second one, and then back to, uh, and then to the end. Okay. Uh, all the path operations are rectangle, for example. So you start at one, uh, three, uh, at uh, zero, th uh, three, and then you move, uh, producing a rectangle to eight, four. Okay, this is exactly what you want uh, when you produce rectangles. You can produce circles. Circle is a bit different because, in fact. Um, this is not important where you go. You draw you the first point, the first coordinate is the center of the uh, circle. See two five, for example. Um, and then you draw a circle with radius uh, zero point five, which is this one. Then you line two four five, draw a circle with radius zero point two. And then g move to so no line to six five, and then draw a circle. Okay. Um, maybe you don't want to mix th uh, mix things, but why not? Okay. Each path operation have have a lot uh, has a lot of options. You can find in the documentation. This is you'll see uh, the documentation is very very easy to go through. Big but easy. Okay. Uh, the last one is an ellipsis. So x radius is 0 0.2 and y radius, vertical radius, is 0 0.5. Okay. Um, you can see that here coordinates used were 2, 5, 4, 5, and 6, 5. Uh, there is uh, 0, 0 is not included, but when you draw the box around, uh, zero is not included, it should be somewhere uh, here, maybe. And uh, you don't have big box including this zero, zero points. In fact, the size of the box is computed directly by ticks, so you don't have to specify it. Just start at any point, draw around this point, 
even if you get uh, negative coordinates or things like that, uh, the result will fit in a box uh, with no problem. Okay, what is that? Uh, any idea what this may produce? Hmm? Uh, yes, there is a formula, in fact, which is just here. But before we have a lot of things, we, we have another formula here, an another one here. Um, so, maybe we can just read, okay? So we'll draw something very thin and grey, which starts somewhat near the origin. We don't want to know why this is a little before the origin. Uh, we draw a grid up to a right corner, which should be around 4-4. Four, four, okay? So this is kind of grid we've uh, put here. Then we draw a arrow. This is what is written. Uh, starting somewhat at the origin, going about to 4-0. So this is not horizontal arrow. Then we put a node on the right and the content is x in mathematics. Okay? You just read. Then you put an arrow starting at the origin, going vertically, say row 4, this is vertical, and put a node on the left with f of x. Okay? in mathematic uh, display, okay? Then, you draw with the color orange, so I change my pen, a plot. Oh, maybe this is ugly, so we jump. Something, we, do, we draw something, we plot something. And then at the end we put a node on, on the right, and inside we have this uh, uh, equation. So, back to the only problem. What is plot? This is like before. This is a circle, rectangle. This is just a way uh, to move. This is how to move. So, we want to plot something where coordinates are x. We don't know what is x, but okay. This is x. This is the command x, but... And the other coordinates is computed by... 0.9, so one tenth, this is this, this part in the equation, times the exponential of x. This is this part of the equation. So, in fact, we're plotting a function. This is the result of your equation. You just have to read it. This is written exactly. So, when you proofread this, this is like text. You just read and you you read what is wrong with uh, what uh, you've produced, okay? Uh, just a little information here. Uh, how did LaTeX know uh, that the function should not be plotted later, you know? In fact, there is an option that was quite uh, uh, hidden. At the beginning, I've put a domain equal 0 to 3.6, okay? Um, here, the, the, the idea is uh, every option, uh, in fact, that domain is an option for plot. But because of the keys and the system of key, keys and values, you can put an option before and it will be applied then for all children of these uh, things. For example, when I start the text picture, I say, okay, this is um, the, the domain. So, th for every plot inside, this is the domain. So, if I have any other function that th than this one, they will use exactly the same domain. This is quite useful, okay? Um, for the the same uh, the same is for for example very thin and gray this is the green that is uh, like that but in fact if you start drawing very thin and gray the grid will be also okay this is quite logic you you can move every option up 
if they, if they apply to every, ch every child, okay? This is the result. A little about shape. Um, for uh, when you produce a picture, so here, this is an important uh, option, sorry. Uh, I told you that you can move everything up, but sometimes option can apply only to some things. For example, if I put the draw option at the beginning, in fact, it is not useful because uh, Tix doesn't know if it applies to every path, to every node. We've seen that is n it's not the same to draw a node. It just draw the box uh, around the node. Uh, or to draw um, uh, a line in, in drawing a path is not the same. So uh, you can't know. So you have uh, a lot of keys that are just every node, every path, every blah blah. Okay. So you can specify options like that for every node. So every node has style draw. This is appended to an, any option of a, a node. So here, I do not need to specify that the node should be drawn. Okay, this will be done for the first, uh, for example. So at zero zero, I put the node A. So you've seen I, s I start a path, but I don't draw it. I just want to move points to points to place points on a page. So here I put an A with drawing a box. I can specify the shape of a node. For example, the B as the shape rectangle. OK, this is not useful. This is the same as A. But this is important to see that the default is a rectangle. Sometimes you don't want uh, that. Um, uh, around the C, I've put a, uh, a node, which is a circle. OK? Around the D, a diamond. And then I have an option, which is specific to diamond. A diamond as shape aspect 2. Here, for diamonds, these keys contains um, the ratio between, uh, you know, the, the vertical um, um, dimension and the horizontal dimension of the diamond. So here, it's 2. You can specify everything, you can specify as a global option. For example, uh, every diamond has a shape aspect 2 if you want every node to have this. And the last one is a trapezium. Okay. To use this, in fact, the, the first one here are uh, included directly in ticks. I mean, uh, as soon as you include the package, you have these shapes. But diamond and trapezium are not. This is to keep ticks quite light because this is so big that you s this is like LaTeX. You can't have everything of it, uh, um, um, you know, uh, included in your documents at the beginning. This is too big. I it will take, uh, I mean, hours to compile if you keep uh, everything. So here you have Tix library. So like use package, you use the command use Tix library uh, to include uh, things like here shapes. So at the beginning of my document, I have, and I forgot to put it here, but uh, you have um, use, um, yes, it's, uh, sorry, uh, use ticks library, and then in the option, you have shapes, okay? And then you can use every shape and options are described in the documentation. I will not go through each option, but for example, you have uh, options that are uh, used already in HTML. You have this inner step, which is called padding, I think, in HTML. Uh, this is the distance between the text, so the closest uh, box around the text, and the real uh, limit of your box. And you have also an outer space. Uh, I don't remember the name in HTML, but uh, this is when you want to draw a line to the node, it will stop at, uh, at some distance from the node, okay? So here is where you can find more information uh, on graphics. 
First, you have the LaTeX Graphics Companion, which is a uh, uh, quite big book. This is the, 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 the books that, that follows uh, the LaTeX Companion, which I told you about, and we talked to you about uh, last time. Um, this is where you, find you will find any information about including pictures, about drawing graphics with uh, the picture environment, the PS picture, or any other tool, uh, for example, uh, Metapost. The problem on Metapost, that's why I didn't talk about here, but you, you may hear about. Um, the problem of Metapost is that it needs uh, an external software to run. This is not really included in LaTeX, but this is like a BibTeX, okay? This is the, the same way, but now we have ways to, produ to produce directly graphics inside LaTeX, which is quite... Uh, Useful. Then uh, from Tiltanto, the t t t TIX and PTF uh, manual. Uh, you can find it on the Comprehensive Tech Archive Network with all libraries. Okay, so you have uh, documentations of all uh, existing libraries. Um, and if you want to see some examples of uh, what you can produce with TIX, because here it was quite limited, you know just put notes, you draw things, uh, okay? So it's not so high level, but you can define uh, uh, shapes of, uh, I don't know, clouds of uh, uh, server machine or uh, anything you want. So you define your shape, then you use it as a node and you can draw uh, um, graphics of uh, mostly everything. Okay, so you can see example he here, and uh, you have not only the, the, the results, but also the code. So read the code, you will understand what they do, or if you don't, uh, go back to the documentation, which is very good. Or go back to me if you need. Very need. Okay, uh, I forgot about that. <laughs> need to, <laughs> okay. Floats, very important part. Uh, we've seen that when we include images, this is the same with the uh, text picture and things like that. Uh, when we include it, it's seen as a character or for text pictures, just uh, put uh, as a paragraph so it's not centered, it's not placed. It can be uh, anywhere. For example, uh, if you have a, a big picture that is uh, almost a page uh, eight, um, you write your text, then at the middle of the page you decide to include the image, but there is no place to for the the the, the picture to fit. Uh, so this is moved on the next page, but all your text is moved is moved back. But you had place to put text here. So um, this break the, the the page setting. Often also you will talk about uh, some pictures, some graphics more than once in your document. And maybe uh, a few page later, few pa pages later. So we'll you will not include your uh, images three, four, five times each time you you talk about it. The same for tables. When you put an array with a uh, uh, data, you don't want to to put it everywhere in your document when you talk about it. Sometimes you you talk about this result all your document uh, long. So this is not uh, possible. The solution here is to use the figure environment. The figure environment can move uh, your figure where he wants, mostly, okay? So that means the figure is now floating. This can move uh, on the next pages, but the text can move before the images. So now, uh, how do we refer to that? Uh, so here, this is just an include graphics of uh, the KTH uh, logo. Um, we first want a caption to know what we're talking about because this is not just after we. we y you can't say, uh, okay, this is the KTH logo, two dots, the image, then uh, your text. Because maybe the image uh, can be the next page on the next page. Okay. So you want to refer to it, maybe with a name, with a number. So you add a caption. Um, you see that uh, the caption is uh, put exactly where you put the comment, okay? So 
the 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 more common way is the under the picture, but if you really need to put it up, but it's not uh, what you want to do. Then a centering comment because as as you've seen, uh, so here it's the width of my page. Uh, as you see, the 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 caption is centered, but not the picture. So we need to center things. Okay, so we use the centering comment we've seen before. This is equivalent to the uh, begin center uh, and center environment. Okay, then we, we want to use reference with label and reference. So I put a label. Uh, the, uh, this is uh, a habit to put a fig uh, colon, in the, uh, a name to, to remember. The, the fig part is to not to mess up with all uh, uh, level you may have for sections, for equations, for uh, pictures, for tables. So you can put this before. Okay, this does not work. We see th the result, there is nothing. In fact, this is a uh, rule of thumb. You put always the label after the numbering command, everywhere. This is uh, also true for equations, for sections. You put after, not before. Okay, you this is the work of the number common to say, okay, now uh, uh, you're, uh, I'm inside a figure you can refer to with one, okay? And then we use the ref, and you can use the page ref as we've seen uh, during the first section, uh, the first session, the first lecture. Okay? So for figures, you can uh, add a placement option. You have four possibilities, and you can specify more than once. This is just advice to LaTeX to say, okay, I want to put the picture either here, in order, here, at the top of a page, at the bottom of a page, because you can move things, to, so you have to tell it where you want uh, things to be placed. Or um, P, this is on a separate page for m maybe multiple figures, so you will have uh, some figures group on a page Sometimes, if you have a lot of uh, figures, this is a good idea uh, not to to break paragraph uh, every everywhere to group your uh, figures in one page. Uh, the table and their environment is exactly the same. This is um, a floating environment like figure, but mostly used for tabular and arrays. Uh, the difference is in the caption.